and welcome into Weather Nation on this Wednesday. You're taking a look in Green Bay, Wisconsin. People putting the boats in, some taking them out of Lake Michigan. Probably a good idea as we are going to be seeing some strong and severe weather throughout the afternoon and evening. The water not always the best place to be during severe weather events, and we hope that folks in Green Bay are preparing. We want to talk a little bit more about the risk today, which is a level four out of five threat, and we are joined by the warning coordination meteorologist out of the Green Bay office, Kurt Kotenberg. Kurt, thank you so much for joining us today out of the busy day to talk about our severe weather risk. And we want to talk a little bit more about what you in Green Bay and the surrounding area are anticipating. Sure, um, certainly a, a busy day for us. Um, the Storm Prediction Center just came out with their update about 10 minutes ago. They boosted the moderate risk area a little bit further up to the north and to the east to include Green Bay and Brown County. So as you can see there on the map, yeah, they shifted it just a little bit further north and west with their latest update. The big thing with this and the reason why everything is in a moderate risk is because basically we have all modes of severe weather on the table. So, you know, we're not just looking at, you know, maybe a hail or two here and there, kind of a pulsy type storm. Um, there's absolutely a tornado threat, as much as I don't want to say that. Um, could see multiple tornadoes across the area, especially in the central portion of the state. And there's a damaging wind threat. So one thing to note with these storms is the initial line. So they'll be coming from the Northwest. So if you look around, you know, Lake Superior, the Duluth area, that's where they'll kind of start going. And then they'll just drop to the South and East across the rest of Wisconsin. But that initial line, the storms could be moving around 50, 55, 60 miles an hour. So, you know, if you look on the radar say, oh, the storms are really far away from me, you know, most storms typically, you know, 10, 15, 20 miles an hour uh, is their typical movement. But these ones, you know, if they're moving 50, 60 miles an hour, they could be upon you really quickly. So that's one thing that we'll be watching closely. And we're trying to get the message out to, you know, be ready for the conditions to rapidly change. You know, if you're outside at the launching your boat or anything and, you know, it looks kind of gray in the horizon, you know, you think you might have an hour, you know, you might not. The storms might be moving really quickly. Um, but again, so all modes of severe weather, we have the tornado threat, damaging wind threat, and hail threat as well. And then lastly, something else that we're not really wanting to leave out or leave forgotten is the potential for flooding and flash flooding. Um, basically, we had an event come through late um, Sunday night into Monday morning, and that dropped about one to three inches of rain, depending on where you are across the state of Wisconsin. So especially the central portion of Wisconsin, uh, what we call the flash flood guidance. So that's something we look at as forecasters. Um, they have a one hour flash flood guidance and a three hour flash flood guidance. And that kind of tells us, you know, how much rain falls and at what point, you know, how, how, how much rain can we get over that time before flooding and bad things start to happen. And right now, especially in central Wisconsin, that area near Wausau and Marathon County, um, the flash flood guidance is around one inch to an inch and a half. And these storms could be incredible rain producers. You know, the type where you, you put your hands out in front of your face and you can barely see them. It's just coming down and, you know, so hard and in sheets. And, um, you know, you get, get an inch of rain, you know, within 15, 20 minutes. So, you know, flash flooding is absolutely going to be a concern as well um, on top of the initial severe weather threat. Yeah, and Kurt, with some of these storms coming in through the evening overnight hours, you have any good reminders and tips for people before they go to bed tonight to prepare for these storms? Um, well, certainly, you know, being prepared starts days in advance. That's something we try to, to preach here from the Weather Service. You know, what I always tell people is if you can every morning, you know, as you're checking your phone, you're scrolling through your social medias or whatever you're doing, take 60 seconds when you're doing that searching to just check the weather forecast, um, you know, from, from whomever. I'm not, <laughs> could be from, you know, your, your favorite local forecaster, your favorite national TV station, whoever, um, just, just to be aware of the weather. And then, you know, continue that preparedness. If it looks, you know, something like today where we certainly have a severe weather threat, you know, keep that in the back of your mind. Like, okay, I might need to check the weather more often. Um, and then start thinking of things you can do to prepare. So if you're watching us from Wisconsin right now, um, you know, Green Bay, Wausau, Rhinelander, um, you know, <laughs> think think of objects you have outside your place that you wouldn't want to introduce to 70 mile an hour winds and, you know, make sure those are secured, make sure those are brought in. 
And then in terms of, um, you know, as we get closer to the event, think of what, what to do. Like if, you know, where, think of where you'll be at around seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock tonight, and make sure you have a way to receive warning information from wherever you are. That's the first one. And then the second one is make sure you have a safe place to go. So if you're going to be at home, you know, at eight o'clock, okay, make sure you have a way to receive weather information, whether it's from the TV, radio, your cell phone, um, NOAA weather radio. And then make sure you have your safe place planned right now, because again, tornadoes are a very, very real threat with this. So make sure you have, you know, whatever you need in your basement ready to go. Um, we always say go to the lowest, most interior place of your house. Um, stay away from windows, especially if you have winds. So, you know, if we have 70 mile an hour winds, that's the equivalent of a weak tornado. So, you know, it, it's not, you know, the, the winds can do damage whether there's a tornado or not when they're at 70 miles per hour. And so, you know, if they're blowing very strongly and, you know, it could start to break through glass um, and then you have shards of glass flying around, that's the last thing you want. So um, away from windows, lowest, most interior place to go is what we tell people. Um, and then lastly, with the flash flood threat, uh, most flash flood fatalities occur during the overnight hours. So uh, we just simply say, turn around, don't drown. If you're coming across an area where you can't tell how deep the water is, you know, don't, don't try to be a hero, you know, if you're driving a truck or anything like that, um, you know, just turn around and stay safe and go a different way. Yeah, very important information. You never know how deep the water is, uh, and you also don't know if the road below it is washed away. Kurt, thank you so much for taking time out of your very busy day today. I wish you all the best up at NWS in Green Bay. We here at Weather Nation will continue to keep you on top of the severe weather risks throughout the afternoon, evening, and overnight. You can stream us for free on any of these devices.